computer. Here we go. I'm doing it. All right. Uh, my name is Kim Titchener. I work in human wildlife conflict. Uh, what does that mean? It means that my job is to help communities, government agencies, and uh, industries working in, and living and recreating in areas where wildlife live uh, to do it in safer ways to, of course, reduce the number of uh, attacks that we see by carnivores and ungulate species, uh, but also, of course, to help us uh, conserve these animals on the landscape. And um, my name is Kim Titchener, and I own a company called Bear Safety and More. And um, I newly created a free membership-based uh, website called Rec Safe with Wildlife. And it was my COVID project. You know, some people made sourdough. I was like, I'll oh, make a website and offer a bunch of courses and opportunities for people to have downloadable resources and learn as much as you can about bear and wildlife safety from a credible source. Certainly the government of Alberta, government of British Columbia, um, a lot of the places that, that, you, are, that you are living, um, they do have some resources. Um, some of it is extensive, some of it is, is not extensive. Some of it we actually need to change. I've, I've messaged some government agencies that, hey guys, we've got some new research, let's update this stuff. Um, and when we jump on places like Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, um, you can find all kinds of, of videos and answers from people about bear and wildlife safety but it may not be the most up-to-date information. Sometimes it's based off of old myths and things that people learned in school back in the day. Um, and so my goal here was to create Rec Safe with Wildlife to offer people a credible source for bear and wildlife safety. Um, all of our work is science-based and all of the biologists that work with us and human wildlife conflict specialists have worked very hard to ensure that all the messaging that we share with you is the latest and greatest. Uh, I started my career working with Parks Canada uh, in beautiful Banff National Park. Um, I'm just, anybody here been to Banff National Park? You can write in the chat feature to let me know. Yes, okay, David's been to Banff National Park. I love Banff. Um, it's such a beautiful place. Canmore is lovely as well. A little wild these days with a number of people. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a place that's dear and near to my heart and it's where I fell in love with the grizzly bear. And of course, black bears as well. After working in the park um, in the field with the grizzly and black bear population, I moved on to help start a charitable organization called Wild Smart, working with communities on trying to reduce, reduce conflicts, teaching people all about bear and wildlife safety um, in communities, and then started a consulting business working mainly with oil and gas, and then forestry, construction, railway, hydroelectric dams. Uh, and we also work with the cruise ship industry and carbon offsetting companies in the United States. So we're all over the place. Uh, we do a lot of consulting these days. Um, we're going to be working in polar bear country and hopefully in Italy next year. Um, so do join us on at Bear Safety Adventures on Instagram because it's a great opportunity to learn about some of these bear species in other parts of the world, what's going on with them, what we need to help to do to help conserve them. Um, and it's just so interesting. Like, did you guys know there were bears in Italy? Like grizzly bears live in Italy. There's two places in Italy where they live. Isn't that crazy? Like, um, there's another place that people are always like, did you know there's grizzly bears in Japan? Did you know there's grizzly bears in the Gobi Desert? There's like 45 of them living there in rock caves. It's it's absolutely madness. There's eight species of bears in the world. And it's truly amazing when you look around and see um, some of the places that grizzly bears live um, all over the world in Asia, um, as well as, as Europe, and of course, uh, here in, in Canada and the United States. So tonight, we've got 30 minutes together. If I get a chance, um, I will, of course, I will stay on longer as long as the children don't start running in the door trying to go, mom, 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 I need you to put me to bed, which of course, there's no way they're going to do that because who wants to go to bed, right? <laughs> All right, um, and I noticed we do have some kids here tonight, which is awesome. And um, I really appreciate having families here as well because uh, a lot of us are hiking with our kids and we wanna be safe, we wanna keep them safe. So um, today we're gonna talk about the top 10 tips for avoiding encounters with bears. And since um, I wanted to start off with talking about children and dogs. So children and dogs, they're small, they move erratically, they run around a lot. Um, and of course, carnivores, they can see them as a prey, right? They can see them as vulnerable. And when we look at attack rates across North America, we tend to see higher rates of attacks with children that are left unsupervised. Um, we also are seeing a rising number of attacks related to dogs off leash. So my two biggies there to, to tell you about is if you have a dog and you love your dog, which I know we all do, keep it on a leash when you're, when you're going out into bear country. 
Um, what we find has been happening, and we're seeing a rising number of cases in Canada and the United States, not just with black bears, but also with grizzly bears, um, where people are walking their dog, the dog smells something amazing, runs ahead and finds a grizzly bear on a carcass. The bear gets defensive, runs after the bear, runs after the dog. And then the dog, of course, goes, mommy, daddy, runs to the people. And then the people are seen as a threat and then they get attacked too. And it's just, ah, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate. Um, well, Barb, we'll just get you to mute yourself. Thank you so much for joining us. And, um, and then the other one, which we're seeing a big trend in is with black bear, female black bears with cubs. People are out walking their dog, dog runs ahead, finds this mama black bear with her two babies. And of course the dog's like, hey, how's it going? Let's play. And the, the bear goes, no, 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 these are my babies. I gotta protect them. And then they chase the dog. And then of course the dog inevitably ends up running towards the people and the people get hurt too. So um, if I can remind you of, of anything, this is, this is certainly one of the big ones for me as far as top 10 tips are, is keep your dogs on leash and keep children close at hand. So if you're walking on trail systems where you've got, um, a, it's a lot of bushes, a lot of switchbacks, it's hard to see very far ahead of you, you don't have really good lines of sight, keep kids basically arms reach away. Um, in your, when you're in more open habitat, you know, you can let them kind of go ahead a bit or a little bit behind. But when you're in some of those places where you're like, ah, I'm seeing lots of signs of bear activity, um, you know, and I can't really see what's ahead of us on the trail, keep those kids close by and, and that will help keep them safe. And, and you know, we always talk about don't run and what is a child gonna do if they're way ahead of you on the trail and they see a big gold grizzly bear, they're gonna go, mom, dad, there's a grizzly bear. And they're gonna come running right back to you which of course can cause that instinct to chase in the bear. So um, as far as um, the big other ones and I always remind people of course is do not approach or feed bears. And I know everybody knows that um, and of course, I'm sure that none of you are the folks that are tossing, you know, shish kebabs out the door of your minivan and feeding a grizzly bear. Um, but we see, we do see this trend recently in the last few years of more cases here in Alberta where people are either leaving food out on their picnic table, they go for a walk around the, around the campground and then they're like, oh, my food will be fine. I can leave this cooler out for five minutes. Bear walks by, smells that, goes, nobody's around. I think I'm going to go check out that smell. They pop open the cooler. The next thing you know, this bear has learned campgrounds yep. are where I find food. Oh, we're just going to mute you there. Uh, Chris, awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Um, the number one thing I like to remind people to do when they're out hiking is make noise. And the biggest, best deterrent, better than um, anything else out there in the world is the human voice. And people go, well, why? Like, what do you mean? And what I mean is that every couple of minutes as you're walking, hiking, or running, you're letting out a hoop and a holler. And what you're doing is communicating with the natural world. If you went and sat down on a log, you would hear the sounds of birds chirping. You'd hear squirrels warning you, hey, you're way too close to my area. Um, everything else is making noise. And so we've got to let wildlife know that we're coming. And that way, number one, it gives animals the opportunity to get off the trail and out of your way. The other one is, is then they know that what you are. And unfortunately, some of the cases that we've seen out there of attacks with species such as cougars, they misidentify us. They think, oh, it's a deer, right? Something's bent over doing something, not making noise for a while. Um, and we've seen this in cases with people in industry bent over working, cougar walks by, goes, oh my gosh, I think that's food. So always make noise frequently to let them know you're coming and let them know I'm a person. And so when I'm out hiking with my friends or family, I'll go like, Woo! and I'll let up like this big holler. And then whoever's behind me will go, Woo! and then if there's a bear on the trail ahead, it's gonna hear that sound and go, oh, what was that? And then a couple minutes later, I go, Woo! they hear that again and they realize I'm coming in their direction and they need to get out of the way. And if you look at wildlife camera research, it's really interesting, bears, cougars, moose, elk, everybody uses our, like they're on the same trails as us. Um, and there's like literally video footage of like a, you know, grizzly bear walking on a trail. Five minutes later, there's somebody with a Tim Hortons cup walking by. And then two minutes later, another bear walks by. Um, so these animals are using these same paths of movement. Um, and so by letting them know, they often will get off the trail, get out of your way. 
Um, and it is the, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you avoid getting yourself into a defensive bear attack. It can help you to really avoid a bear misidentifying you as food and then a predatory attack as well. Um, so the question that often comes up for me um, with folks is they'll say, well, how about if I play music, Kim? Or how about if I honk an air horn every couple minutes? Um, and I always like to go back and say, you know, there are very distinct sounds that bears are listening for. Um, and, and wildlife, when they're out in nature, they're listening for things like the sound of a stick breaking. They're listening for the sound of a bush moving. Um, and you as a person, you need to be listening for those things too. So if you're blasting music, you've got your cell phone out and, you, and you're blasting music away, you're thinking, oh, bears will hear me come in, no problem. But the problem with that is, you won't hear a branch break. You won't hear a bush move or the sound of a bear going, hoof, hoof, get out of my way. Um, and it's not safe for you to be doing that. So it's better for you to be listening all the time and then every couple of minutes letting out those hoops and hollers. We also don't have any science to back that music um, is a deterrent for bears. But we do have research that has shown that the sound of a human voice can help a bear understand that there's people coming, it's a warning, oh my gosh, there's humans coming, and they'll get out of the way. Um, not every bear gets off the trail. We do have bears in our parks and provincial parks and national parks and areas where it's very, very crowded and lots of people where they get sick of getting off the trail, like, I'm not getting off the trail. There's a really good berry patch here. They can, they can go around me or like, I'm just going to keep eating. I don't care about these people. So once in a while, you will run into a bear that's what we call highly habituated or indifferent. And in those cases, you're like, you literally pull out your bear spray, group up with everybody and start backing away, give the bear space and leave the area and just pick another trail for the day. This bear has decided they're not going to move. Um, and I've certainly had this happen before. Um, and I know um, folks that have been on multi-day backcountry trips and they're like, but I have to go this way. And they've had to take out their map, figure out another route around the bear just to give it some space. All right. Um, as far as speed goes, um, we do see cases of folks on mountain bikes getting attacked by bears. We literally have cases where people literally hit the bear with their bike. And so um, if you are going to go out mountain biking, please go in a group. Make sure that every person who is with you is carrying a can of bear spray physically on them. They can grab really easily. That way, if the first person runs into the bear, hits the bear, and they start getting hurt by the bear, the second person has a can of bear spray, they can help. And we had a very sad case uh, in the United States um, of a U.S. Forest Service worker. Um, they were out mountain biking with a friend, ran into a grizzly bear, literally hit it with their bike, and they did not survive. And the person they were with, he had no bear spray. So he basically had to back up with his mountain bike, leave, call 911, and they came back later. And unfortunately, he didn't make it. Um, so I, I, I don't want to discourage you from mountain biking, but I think making noise even more often because you're moving at a high speed, if you know you're about to go down a really steep part of, um, or a, a curve, just be like, Wah! and just make a really big call sign to let these animals know you're coming so you don't end up hitting a bear with your bike. <laughs> that would not be very fun. Um, and same thing with running. When we're not running, we, you know, we absolutely do need to make noise more frequently. All right, and I def we're definitely gonna have some time here at the end for some questions, and I totally wanna answer your questions and also give away some prizes. Um, I know some folks have just jumped onto the call, so welcome, and um, thank you so much for muting yourself. I really appreciate it. All right, the other piece to the whole making noise is definitely those lines of sight. So if you have poor lines of sight, there's lots of vegetation around, you've gotta make noise even more often. If it's very hard for bears to hear you as well when there's lots of vegetation, if there's water running by, it's harder for bears to hear you and, um, you know, and wind. Those are the big ones for, for, for bears. Um, and so I like, if, I, if I'm going up a creek bed, which I love going up creek beds in a canyon, I stay a lot closer to the people I'm with and we make a heck of a lot more noise and more often because we know that it's not gonna travel very far. Watching for signs of bear activity. So if you get a chance to go to the new website, um, which is free, and it's got all kinds of downloadable resources you can print off, you can go over it with your kids and family. Um, it's recsafewithwildlife.com. So definitely if you're on your computer, which you all are, or your phones, um, click on that, and then you have that kind of stored. Um, if you go there, you will find all kinds of stuff um, we've got one guide and it's signs of bear activity. So how to tell if there's a bear in the area. And it's got pictures 
of like bear diggings, overturned rocks and logs, berry bushes. Of course, if there's lots of berries out, it's a sign there's most likely going to be some bears around, uh, a covered carcass. Um, when grizzly bears and black bears, mostly grizzly bears, when they kill something, especially large game, they can't eat the whole thing in a sitting. So what they do is they will cover it up with like dirt and grasses um, and sticks, whatever's around. And that helps to kind of reduce the smell. And then um, hopefully then other animals won't come in and try and steal the animal from them. The problem is we're walking down the, the path, like you may not notice a big mound like that. So if you smell a dead animal, if you see birds of prey flying above or pecking away at something on the ground, that's a good indicator that there's likely a carcass nearby. You're gonna back away and leave the area. Um, we definitely do see grizzly bear attacks related to uh, food sources. Um, they will protect the food cache. They'll perceive you as a threat. Um, and so you wanna back off and give them space. And of course, if you do see a bear on a kill, ee, you gotta pull out that bear spray and be ready because they might run at you and you'll need to spray them with bear spray. So check out these sources online. They're on our site, um, you know, how to tell the bears in the area, what to do, how to avoid, um, you know, a bear encounter in the first place. We've got some really neat stuff on there for kids. Um, and then the next one, of course, is looking for bear foods. Um, am I walking through a berry patch? And it is the berry season, and there's some spots where there's, some, where there's lots of berries around. Of course, it's been very hot, and they've, a lot of them have really shriveled up, so I'm feeling pretty bad for the bears right now in some places. Depending on where you are in Canada right now, um, you know, there are obviously some areas where the bears are suffering. They're like, there's no berries. And, you know, bears feed on about 20,000 berries a day. And it's a very important food source for them in the summertime and into the fall. So they can get as fat as they can uh, so that when it comes to wintertime, they can live off those fat storages. So it gets pretty tough for them. And those food sources are very important. So always be looking for signs of what foods bears are feeding on by the season. And if you get a chance to take one of our more, our longer bear safety courses, we've got like a two hour bear safety class that gets really into bear ecology, shows you lots of pictures and signs of what bear activity looks like, um, all the different types of food they eat by the season. So there's so much to learn about bear behavior um, and their ecology. Um, we put together a two hour course just for that. So you can always check that out at Rec Safe with Wildlife as well. Traveling in groups. Um, have we got anybody here who's a solo hiker? Anyone like to hike by themselves? Yes, yes. And some people are, no, no way, I'm not doing that, right? Um, there are folks that just love to be the, by themselves in nature, and, and, and I get it. So how do we help you to be safer when you're out there? Um, absolutely, it, we have to discourage it. And if you look at all the parks materials from provincial to federal stuff, you'll see it says hike in a group. Um, and so what we find is people in groups of four or more, we don't really see bear attacks. It's the larger groups that, you know, they're much more intimidating to a bear if they have an encounter. A bear is like, whoa, there's a whole bunch of them. I'm out of here. I'm going to leave instead. Um, whereas when we look at who gets attacked, they're usually by themselves or with one other person. So if you're one of those people that's like, I'm still going to keep hiking by myself, then you do have to take more precautions. You've got to make noise way more often. You absolutely want to let somebody know where you're going when you'll be back carry a spot device or Garmin inReach. So if something does happen, you can press a button and you will be getting some emergency services coming your way. Um, and just carrying that bear spray physically on you and being prepared that, you know, you are more vulnerable because you're alone. Um, you are more susceptible to a bear misidentifying you thinking you're a food source. So you've got to no make noise often, look behind your back, really watch the area that you're in when you are alone. Um, for those of you on the call are like, I am terrified of bears and that's why I'm here today, Kim. You're gonna hike, and Joy's like, that's me. Um, you're gonna hike in a group of four or more people because if you have an encounter and you don't have a lot of experience with bears and seeing them, it, it can be really scary. So it's a lot safer if you're in a large group because everyone's gonna kind of join together, you know, group up and that's gonna be very intimidating for the bear. Um, and generally speaking, we don't really see attacks in those large groups. And you've got to stick together. Like if you've got someone who's had way too much coffee and they're like all the way around two more switchbacks above you, that doesn't really count as a group of four or more people. Um, so do stick close together when you do hike together. 
And then carrying bear spray. And I'm sure there are some questions about bear spray, um, which I'm always happy to answer. If you don't get a chance to get through all of them, we do have resources um, on bear spray. Um, we have a three-day challenge that, that talks you through everything you need for getting out into the outdoors and everything you need to know about how to use bear spray. Um, and there's even a one-hour course on there all about bear spray, which is pretty cool. Um, this stuff is amazing. It, um, it hasn't saved my life um, in the sense that I've never had to spray a bear. Um, I've, knock on wood, done a pretty good job of always making tons of noise, being really aware of my surroundings, and choosing to turn around when I've noticed there's a lot of bear activity. Like, you know what? I'm not going on a run on this trail. I literally see fresh tracks of a bear in front of me. I'm going to go somewhere else. Um, so a study was done looking at how effective is bear, bear spray in the real world. Like people who are out hiking, they, they come around a corner and there's literally a grizzly bear with two cubs feeding on an elk carcass five meters away. Like are those people really going to survive such a close range encounter um, and a very dangerous situation? And this study was done in Alaska um, by Stephen Herrero and, and Tom Smith, who are world renowned bear researchers and bear behaviorists. And what they found was that um, they found 72 cases where people sprayed bear spray um, and they sprayed polar bears, only a couple, mostly grizzly bears and some black bears. And 98% of those people, when they sprayed those bears, they walked away with no injuries. 98%, that's crazy. I was like, okay, I'm buying bear spray. Like when I saw that study, I was like, I'm, I'm done, I'm in. Um, and I don't work for a bear spray company. I'm just blown away that, that we could find a tool that could be that effective. Uh, and the reality is, is you may not, if you have a gun, let's say you're on crown land or you're hunting, you may not have time to pull out your gun. You may not have time to pull out this, pull it off, pull it out, get off the safety and actually get a kill shot. Um, and what they found in another study involving guns showed that a lot of the cases, people had to shoot at least four times before they managed to kill the bear and stop the attack. So bear spray is a great tool to carry for hunters as, a, as another tool that you may need to use in an encounter. Um, and for those of us that are big on hiking and camping, this stuff is the best. Um, if you ever get yourself into a situation where you need to stand your ground and that bear, that bear is predatory, it's approaching you, it's seeing you as a food source, um, having bear spray, it gives you the confidence to deal with the bear in front of you. When you have nothing, the urge to run, to get out of there is really high. Whereas you know, you're like, I got the 98% stuff, I'm gonna take this bear out. Um, it's not gonna hurt the bear long-term. All it's gonna do is cause that bear to become incapacitated for about 10 to 30 minutes. And it's gonna cause extreme inflammation to the eyes, the nose and the mouth, burning sensation to the skin. They'll start coughing, gagging. It's like they've got the worst cold of their life. Um, they won't be able to see you because their eyes will swell up and they will either turn and run in the opposite direction or they'll drop to the ground and start trying to rub that bear spray off. And that gives you an opportunity, keeping your bear spray in hand, to start backing away and leaving the area. And of course, calling wildlife officials to let them know about the encounter that you've just had because they may, they may need to close that trail in that area. All right, um, the next one after bear spray, um, and I should mention one more thing with bear spray is I've, I've had friends um, that I actually had a friend who was attacked by a grizzly bear and he had his bear spray on him, but he always carried it on, this, on his crew vest. He worked for um, the government of Alberta and he was, he was actually wearing it on a vest um, as part of his trail crew uniform. But that day, he instead of putting it here, he had gone hiking with his wife on the weekend and put his bear spray on a carabiner. And so he told me, you know, it's very hard to pull a can of bear spray and pull it off a carabiner when you're terrified because your small motor skills, they break down really quickly, right? Right, you're just like, ah, like you're shaking. David's like, yes, yes, right? How do you do that? And so he heard the bear running towards him and he immediately went to grab his bear spray. Oh, it's not there. So now he's already one, two seconds. Then he remembers it's back here. He goes to grab it off the carabiner, can't get it off can't get off the carabiner and he can see the grizzly bear at this point and he just says he's just started going ah just yelling as he's trying to get it off he managed to get it off the clip but it was too late and he didn't get the clip off and spray the bear and so the bear went ah and it scared the bear too the bear reared back up and went like this and, and hit him with his paw and the paw got caught on his crew vest so it actually worked out really well that he was wearing a vest it didn't he didn't get hurt 
He got pushed down a hill. He fell to the bottom of the hill, still had the can, can of bear spray in his hand and sprayed the bear as it came running down the hill in the face at about a foot and a half and sprayed the entire can in the bear's face. The bear went, started making horrible screeching noises and ran off and he walked away. I should say he limped away with a sprained ankle. That was it. He had no other injuries. So for me, that was a really good reminder that I need to have my bear spray close by. I need to have it accessible and I need to practice pulling it out. Um, because when you know you only have a few seconds and most encounters are about five meters or less is what we've been finding. The research shows that a lot of bear encounters are very close range um, because, which makes sense because you're in the bush, a bear doesn't hear you coming. All of a sudden you come around the corner, the bear's like, oh, there's a person. The bear's like, and the bear's like, you know, the, the person's like, oh my God, there's a bear. And you've got very little seconds to react to that encounter. Um, and so think about how am I gonna wear it? Um, if you're gonna wear it on your backpack, it needs to be where you can you can grab it and pulling it off a carabiner might be too difficult. Um, it needs to be physically on you. If you take off your backpack to go for a walk into the woods for a wild pee, you now don't have your bear spray. So think about ways you're gonna carry it. Um, these guys have actually, they're called scat belt. I saw somebody wrote on here, they have a scat belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's Martine, yes, she loves her scat belt. These are so cool because they literally go on your waist and you can wear them over top of your clothes. So if you're wearing a rain jacket, um, if you're on a quad or you're fishing, you can put it up across your chest. Um, I stick it on my kayak. That way when I go to land, I just pull it off and I can stick it on. Um, so think about how you're gonna wear it. If you're a person that wears a traditional belt and you can just wear the regular holster, then get that kind. Those are awesome too, because they're physically on you. You can pull it out really easily. So look at the types that exist. Um, the, I'll put that there, scatbelt.com. That's their website. And I asked them to give us a coupon because I was like, I tell everyone how amazing your product is. Maybe you should give everybody a discount. And so the, they did give me a discount coupon code is Kim and it's you get 15% off. So if you want to get a belt, you can go online. If you want to go to Mount Akuma Co-op, they sell them there. They also sell the traditional holsters. So go and see what's out there on the market and what's going to physically work for you. Because it, it, that's what matters the most is that you can get it out in under two seconds and be able to pull that safety off and spray a bear at close range. And then um, I mentioned it earlier, but storing food in and garbage in bear resistant containers, for those that you go, up, go into the back country, um, look into whether or not where you're going has a bear hang, if it has um, lockers, which I think are the best thing out there. I love when they have those bear resistant lockers, you can just shove everything inside. Um, anything that has a smell from toothpaste to deodorant to sunscreen um, to food scraps, um, everything that has a smell needs to go inside of that container. Bears have an incredible sense of smell. Um, if you think a bloodhound has a good sense of smell, times that by seven and that's a grizzly bear. Um, it's amazing their ability to smell anything. Um, and as far as tents go, I keep my bear spray right here at the top of my head. Um, and I make sure it has a glow in the dark safety on the can of bear spray. And that way at night when I go to sleep, I feel, I feel better because when a bird goes and decides to sit on my tent and make me think that there's a bear outside, I've got my bear spray close by um, and I, I know that I've got it and I can grab it quickly. And then last but certainly not least, go into bear country expecting to see a bear. Every day that I head outdoors and I know I'm going into bear country, cougar country, elk country, moose country, I'm taking that into consideration. You know, am I going to be hiking on a trail where there is lots of water, right? Where bears may be moving through those areas where there's a creek, lots of creek crossings. I know I'm going to have to make tons of noise. If the first seven kilometers are an, on an old forest road, forestry road, there's probably going to be a ton of vegetation and berries on the sides of that. Um, so in that section of the trail, I'm going to make a ton of noise, be really aware of my surroundings. Once I get up the trail and I'm switchbacking into some of that beautiful subalpine where you can see a lot more around you, I'm not gonna be making noise as much. I can see everything around me. It's possible I can run into a bear up there, but I'm gonna see it before, before I'm in a close range encounter. When I know I'm about to dip back down into the forest or come around a corner where I can't see, it's a blind corner, I'm hooping and hollering and letting these animals know that I'm there. All right, I did go over a little bit there to 7.34. Um, but we did get everybody a couple of minutes to, uh, to get on the call. Um, I do want to give you guys all an opportunity to ask uh, a few questions. And I also want to make sure that I give away some prizes today. 
Um, for those of you interested in learning more about RecSafe with Wildlife, I'll just put that on there again, RecSafeWithWildlife.com. It's free um, and all the resources on there. If you're interested in taking one of our more extensive courses, they are on there as well. And everyone who joined us tonight gets a 20% off discount. And the coupon code is, of course, just RecSafe um, and 20% off. And that's good. That, that coupon is good till the end of August. I'll, I'll send you all an email afterwards to thank you. And I can send you any coupons for any of the products that I, that I, that I uh, let you know about tonight. Um, and don't let me forget that we need to give away some prizes because uh, I had one company um, give us two containers of bliss wool, scat belts, so they'd give me two scat belts. And I want to give away um, a couple courses as well. Um, oh, sorry, that should say August 31st is the, uh, is the uh, expiry date for that coupon. August 31st is the expiry date. Um, but you can just go onto the site and just get a free membership. There's a forum where you can ask questions. You'll get, ex you'll get expert advice. Um, if you have anything like where you're like, Kim, could you do a talk on cougars or could you create more resources on moose safety? Just let me know. Just put it on there and then that, and then I will work on it this fall and um, get that up there for you so you have access to it. All right. Uh, any questions? Any, anyone have any burning questions? Anyone want to ask me if bear bells work? <laughs> Um, Rihanna, do you recommend practicing with an actual can of bear spray or is there blank types that you can get somewhere to practice with? That is an awesome question. I really do recommend that you practice spraying it. Um, I do courses for the government, for government agencies and industry, and we actually ship them cans of inert bear spray. So there are manufacturers. Um, there is a company in Alberta and they're called Kodiak Wildlife Products. And they sell all the bear spray to like the big places like Campers Village, Mount Okema Co-op, those kind of folks. And so um, you may be able to buy what's called, um, this, this right here, it's called inert bear spray. And I don't know how much they cost, um, but you can buy one of these cans and actually go and test spray it. And it just has water and propellant in it. So it's not that harmful for you. Or you could take an old expired can and go somewhere where you're not in a campground or a trail where people are, and um, and hopefully the wind isn't too bad. And you can go and practice with your your, your old can. Um, the only thing I would I would caution you is that you will probably get bear spray on you. When I did my training with Parks Canada, we used real cans, and we all got just whiffed in the face with it after, and we needed to find some water to clean ourselves up. So do remember that. Um, as far as your first aid kits, make sure that you always carry some no-tear shampoo because if your children accidentally spray you, or maybe they do it on purpose, I don't know. Um, they, you know, someone decides to accidentally accidentally sprays their bear spray off. It's good to have something you like no-tear shampoo that you can help to wash and clean your face off with. So I keep a little bottle of this in my first aid kit, um, which is super helpful. Um, how do you know if a can is still good besides the expiry date? Thank you, Andrea. Um, so. Uh, there was a recent study that just got completed uh, last year because all of the biologists that were doing research had nowhere to go, so they had no choice but to finish their papers, which was fantastic for me. So then I was like, yes, we got more research here. So these biologists got together, um, Dr. Tom Smith, um, Marty Obart, a whole bunch of people um, that work in the bear world, and they took cans of bear spray and they weighed them. So our problem with bear spray is, is is the manufacturers say that over time, because it's a highly pressurized product, it's going to lose pressure. And so the question is, is at what point does it lose that pressure? So they weighed cans from brand new all the way to 18 years of age. And what they found was the cans were good to go all the way up until four years. And so after four years, you've got to go get a new can of bear spray. Um, other things to know with your bear spray, if you accidentally spray it or you use it in a bear encounter, it's a one-time use product you've got to go get a new can of bear spray. Um, you can't uh, continue to take that can out. And the reason why is these cans only have six to eight seconds of spray in them, or you can get the larger size that has eight to 12 or eight to 10. Um, but once you spray it, you've already, you're already reducing the amount of pressure in that can. Oh, hi, Jody. Welcome to the call. Please just mute yourself. Um, so you want to make sure that you, you, do, um, you do check the expiry date, which is on the bottom or the side of the can. Other things to tell about a can of bear spray, um, if it's no good anymore, um, is, is if you're missing the safety. 
Um, or if um, you notice any swelling to the can, any dents in your can, if you can pull the top off, that's not good. <laughs> I literally took my brother's can of bear spray, which he had rolling around in the back of his pickup truck. And I was like, just, I was like, hey man, you probably shouldn't leave your bear spray just sitting in the back of your truck. And I was holding his bear spray and I broke it in half. And he's like, why did you do that? And I was like, I didn't mean to. And it was just, it had been rolling around so long and he hadn't been taking care of it that it actually unscrewed. So um, when you're in your vehicle, um, you can get these. They're like 11 bucks at Mount Clement Co-op. It's just a container that you can put your bear spray in. So when you're traveling, it won't get punctured. Um, if it's exposed to heat in your vehicle, it can actually blow up in your car. Um, so be careful with these things. Like you really do need to treat them like a weapon. All right. Um, thank you. I heard that if you can feel it move, it was losing pressure. Uh, no, I'm not sure about that one. I haven't heard that, um, but that is, again, great question. Um, you asked how, um, how effective do you think urinating around your camp is? I don't think that's going to help you. Um, bears pretty much know what humans are. The biggest thing, honestly, uh, you is to make sure you don't have anything that's a food smell. That's like, keep your campsite clean. Generally, don't have to worry about bears. Do your research on the campgrounds that you stay at. Um, one of my friends over at Kids Who Explore, she took her family to Tahoe and they're camping and this bear literally walks into the campsite next to her and starts eating food on their picnic table. And she's like, what the heck? So she goes to the campground attendant and she's like, hey, there's a black bear eating garbage and food left out on the, uh, at the another, another campsite. And they're like, don't worry about it. That's Boo. He comes here every day and he feeds off of people's leftovers. And she's like, what? Like... And if you look at the research, especially up here in Canada, when we look at fatal black bear attacks, you know, there's a lot of cases where human food was involved. So we don't want to be teaching bears to come into campgrounds and eat human food because then they can start associating people with food and then as food. Um, so do your research, only camp in campgrounds that you know have bear resistant garbage bins. Um, if you notice when you get to a campsite that they've burned a bunch of food or you see garbage hanging in a tree or there's lots of food scraps left around and there's a lot of garbage, it's pretty obvious that people have been doing a really bad job and, and bears have gotten food around here. Don't camp there. It's not a safe idea. Um, let them know and go to another area. All right, any other questions? Um, I don't know if I told you guys about bear bells, but there was a study done on bear bells and they found that 0% of the bears reacted to the sound of bells. None of them, like it meant nothing. <laughs> and at first Tom was like, I started to think the bears were deaf. I was ringing the bells. I'm hiding in a camouflage, like I'm in a blind and every bear that walked by, no reaction to bear bells. So he took a pencil and he snapped it in half and instantly this female grizzly with her cubs stood up, started looking around and looked straight at him in the blind and knew exactly where that sound came from. And it's because that sound meant something to her. That's a sound that she's listening for um, because that's a sign of danger. There's a bear coming, there's something, a carnivore coming after me. So um, I think whoever invented bear bells thought they were doing a great thing, but unfortunately we just, we just haven't been able to prove that they're a useful tool. Um, so it always goes back to this is why we want to make tons of noise, use the human voice. Any other questions? All right, I'm going to give away some prizes here. Um, we have 24 people on the call. We can give a few prizes away. This is awesome. Okay, so um, the first prize I want to give away is um, the scat belts. Um, we'll give away one of those tonight since um, we've got a bit of a group here. So um, I'm going to think of a number between 1 and 10, and whoever types it in first, um, the number that I'm thinking of, you win a can. I, 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 oh my god, there's so many of you. This is so fast. OK, wait, slow down. <laughs> OK, Melissa uh, Wilkins, it was number five. Melissa, you won. All right, um, Melissa, if what you can do right now would be awesome um, when you get a chance um, is if you can send me an email Kim at bearsafety.ca and say, hey, Kim, I'm Melissa and I want a scat belt. Um, I will send you one in the mail. So please do send me your mailing address. And if you want a small, medium be belt or if you want a large, extra large belt. Um, and they're they're awesome. I like I love them. They're super cool. Um, and for those of you that didn't win a prize, again, just go to the website, scatbelt.com. Use the coupon code Kim and you get 15% off, uh, off of their belts. They're pretty awesome. 
All right, next prize I wanna give away is Blistwool. And you're like, Blist what? Um, here's the website. These, this company, um, she started this uh, company just this past year and she's based in Canmore. Her name is Christine and a small business owner. And I've known her for years. She has the worst blisters I have ever seen. Like everything she wears hiking, it's a disaster. So she found this wool product that if you can stuff it into where the hot spots are, it stops the blisters from, from starting. And it's awesome. I, I also really recommend that you put some in your first aid kit. And that way, if something's going on or your kids start going, my foot hurts right here, you just shove that wool in and it will help to stop that blister from forming. Um, so let's give you guys uh, a case of that. And I believe she also, she's offering a 10% off coupon as well. And um, the coupon code is just my name, Kim. And the coupon for Scat Belt is also Kim. I forgot about that. So Scat Belt and uh, Blist Wool, if you're interested, um, and the, you get 15% uh, off with them. And their, their code is Kim for both of those. Um, so blissful, we're gonna think, I'm gonna think of a number between um, 11 and 20, go! <laughs> hey, wait, who said, oh my gosh, who said 12? Was there a 12 in there? I swear to God, there was a 12. Yes, um, Tenzin Doma. I hope I said your name right, Tenzin, thank you so much. All right, Tenzin, just send me an email at Kim at Bear Safety. .ca and um, we'll get you that that box of blist wool um, and please put in your first aid kit which we should carry with us every time we head outdoors anyways um, or stick it on those those feet that have uh, the potential to get blisters and then last but not least I really want to give away some of my courses so I'm going to give um, two of our bear safety courses um, they're two hours long um, and uh, they they go into detail about bear and bear safety um, how to avoid encounters, what to do in the different scenarios. We show you video footage of, of like, you know, this is what predatory looks like. This is what defensive looks like. We have um, uh, interviews with people who have been attacked by bears, their perspective, things that they learn from the experience. And um, that two hour course is yours forever. Um, once you go on to Rec Safe with Wildlife and you purchase it or you get it tonight for free, um, it's, it's, it's basically this thing that is your resource. So it's an on-demand course. It's yours. Um, if you're like, oh, you know, it's, it's April of next year and you're like, I forgot what she said about what do you do if this is happening? You go back and you take the course again. Um, and if you have friends or family that visit from out of town, let's hope everyone can come visit next year. Um, you can take that course with them. Or if you're going out on a big hike with some friends and you're like, hey guys, do you guys know much about bear safety? And they're like, no, I just figured you would be in charge or I'm planning on running. Um, you can make them take the course with you. And then it just becomes this resource to help you and your family and friends be safer over the long run. Um, and over the years, of course, we'll update and you'll get new updates to those courses. So um, I'm going to think of uh, a number between 21 and 30. Go. Anybody? Any numbers? Okay, wait, hold on. Oh my God, 15. Where is it? Okay, Hugh, you just won. All right, you McDonald, I think it is. Thank you. Okay, you just won a uh, two-hour bear safety course. Send me an email, kim at bearsafety.ca. And I want to give away one more. And um, the, it's actually going to be a quiz question. So last year in 2020, in beautiful Banff National Park, there was a grizzly bear that showed up that was very unusual. And it was something that none of us had ever seen. And any guesses on what color that bear was? Anybody? A very unusual looking grizzly bear. What color? Oh, who said white first? Oh my goodness. I have to go back here. Da, 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 da. Okay, who is, who is RS6K9R? I hope that your mother didn't call you that. <laughs> Whoever is RS, RS6K9R, um, could you tell us your name? <laughs> please, please send me an email at kim at bearsafety.ca um, because you won a course, our two hour bear safety course. All right, any more questions before we finish for the night? My daughter is loving the fact that she doesn't have to go to bed. <laughs> any other questions before we finish? 
We're good. Okay. If you, oh, thanks, Christine. I'm so glad you won. Um, if you by any chance have more questions that pop up after, just go on RexSafeWithWildlife.com and post your question on the forum. There's a forum page, a resource section, and then of course there's our courses. Um, if you have friends and family that couldn't make it tonight, um, please tell them to send me an email. Um, you can go on Bear Safety and more on Facebook. You can go on Instagram at Bear Safety Adventures. And I'm just going to keep doing these talks over and over again as much as I can to try to help people be safer in the outdoors. Um, and I really appreciate everybody being here tonight. And I hope to provide some more free talks on things like cougars and coyotes. Um, and of course, polar bears this fall. I would love to be live with you all in polar bear country at some point. So please do follow us. And I hope to see you then. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks for coming. Bye. <laughs> Martine's like, yes, cougars. I know, right? Everybody wants to know about cougar safety. Bye, Andrea. Bye, Barb. Bye, Joy. Bye, Christine. Andrew, thanks. Bye, Chelsea. <laughs> Bye, Martine. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks, Hugh. Bye. <laughs>